In this lesson, we're going to discuss the anti-siphon valve, also known as a atmospheric vacuum breaker. Really what this is is a combination product. You get a solenoid valve, which will control an individual zone in your irrigation system, but you also get a backflow prevention product here. In some places, the backflow preventer is in a central location at the beginning of the system. It's a testable device, and then everything downstream, you don't worry about um, any type of backflow situation. But in situations where you don't have that, in some states, they prefer these type of backflow preventers. It's an untestable deal, and if it goes bad, you just basically replace the, the valve itself. But um, Here's the situation as far as what we have to protect ourselves against. Okay, you have an irrigation system. Let's say you had a lawn care company come by and spray fertilizer and herbicides and pesticides on your lawn. Maybe you've got a dog outside and there's dog feces out in the grass and other things. And, you know, after a, a system stops running, there may be a little puddle of water around a sprinkler head. So you, you're in the kitchen and you go to get a glass of drinking water from the tap, but what you don't know is that a construction crew just hit the water main line down the street and the water in the, in the main water line, has the pressure has dropped to zero. <clears throat> and so when you go to open up your tap to get some drinking water, theoretically you could cause a vacuum in those pipes and suck water out of your irrigation system up into your glass of drinking water. It sounds, you know, very unlikely that this would happen, but I promise you instances of backflow happen all the time. I haven't constructed my backflow prevention course yet, but we'll talk about examples where um, a funeral home um, in Atlanta, I believe, had a uh, instance of backflow and they had blood that was f uh, sucking back into the drinking water supply. You don't want to be drinking anybody's blood, a cadaver's blood. Um, there's been several instances where people in uh, taking a shower have had all the skin burn off their body because of backflow from a nearby chemical plant. That's happened more than once. So these are very real situations that we have to protect ourselves against. So if you're out there, you're a homeowner, you're a do-it-yourself, and you're going to just throw in some valves and forget about backflow prevention, well, that's a mistake. You're going to be the first one that gets poisoned in this situation. And if, if you're in a state that has laws like South Carolina, where I'm at, it's a $10,000 fine for causing a cross-connection and contaminating the drinking water supply, if they can prove that you did it. So what we have here are products that are going to prevent that. So I just wanted to take a minute, make sure you understand the severity, the levity of what we're talking about here is that it's, it's all about our health. So, you know, some regulations don't mean anything to anybody. This one actually does. Let's talk about some of the backflow prevention devices really quickly and how they differ. As an atmospheric vacuum breaker, this one cannot be under continuous pressure. It can only be run for up to 12 hours at a time. And this portion has to be six inches higher in elevation than any outlet on this zone. Any sprinkler head or faucet or hose bib or anything that you attach has to be six inches below here so that it'll drain down. Not under continuous pressure, but we have a, a pressure vacuum breaker, which is a little different version of this, and it's just a, a, a backflow prevention unit by itself. And we'll see it in just a second here, but it's uh, designed for continuous pressure. Uh, but it has to be 12 inches higher than the highest sprinkler head. And then we can have a, a central unit like this double check valve assembly here, and we'll show it like on the system. This is a testable device, but this covers the entire system. Two, two check valves in here prevent water from re-entering the drinking water supply. So, so let's take a look at some illustrations here of what the situation could possibly be as far as your uh, your supplies and how these main lines should run. In our first illustration here, we're looking at your just basic urban or suburban house on a lot, maybe a quarter acre, half an acre. You've got a house, driveway, there's a water main line uh, under the street out front, and you have a service line that runs from that water main up to your house. Usually there is a water meter on it, 
Maybe you live in a area where you're not charged for actual consumption of water. You just have a, a monthly bill. So you probably don't have a meter there, but you would definitely have a gate valve or a curb stop, which is just a, a brass ball valve that you can put that meter key down in the hole and open and close it. But there'd definitely be some kind of shutoff there. So um, generally what we do in our area is we tap that main line right behind the meter there where we know the water line is and then we tee off and then start the irrigation system like that with our main line and we see a double check valve assembly protecting that irrigation system. That's the product that I'm showing you here is on that line there and it goes around the house where we're, we're going to put our valves in and then you could just use a regular globe style valve with no backflow prevention device on it because you already have a backflow preventer on the main line. In some areas you may have the tap coming from inside the house. We're looking at a picture here of a pressure vacuum breaker on the side of the house. Now this is just for illustration. Obviously these are closer into the house and um, sometimes when you see these situations that are plumbed from the house. Sometimes you'll find the valves and the vacuum breakers and stuff underneath the house in the um, in the basement or if you have kind of a, a walk under basement or something they'll be installed in there to protect them easier to winterize and so forth. You could um, you could tap the main line without a double check valve assembly you know as we're looking at here and just bring it around the house and then you could use these um, anti-siphon valves because you don't have a central backflow prevention device um, or maybe you have a hose bib on the side of your house and that's how we're going to tap in and get our main line no backflow prevention there um, sometimes you, you put the, the pressure vacuum breaker in right there but what we're looking at here is just the hose bib with a T cut into that line, usually a copper line, and then it's run down and you can start your valve uh, manifold there. And that's what we're looking at here is the tap down and we see some anti-siphon valves mounted there. Okay, so um, now let's take a look at a couple of pictures here that um, uh, our friends at Green Life Landscape in uh, Lake Elsinore, California were so kind to allow us to use here and this is just some actual photos you see one uh, we just see it mounted here in the ground from a side view it's got a um, it's got a, a filter coming out of the outlet end of it so this zone is probably for a drip zone but here we see a picture of the full manifold uh, being replaced and being worked on here so a lot of times this is how you're going to see it up against the side of the house the back of the house or the side or something so Let's, um, let's talk about how this actually works and go through a few more illustrations that I have so that you can conceptualize what's going on here. And I know that my illustrations always tend to strip everything down, but I like for you just to see it very basic how it's going to work. Most of these other ones that you're going to find are a little more complex. And, and I'm showing a really stripped down version here. This is an older Rainbird. Um, valve here that I believe was only sold to big box stores like Lowe's or Home Depot or whatever. Normally if you buy them from a professional outlet it'll look more like a regular solenoid valve with this slammed on the side of it. It looks more like what you're used to seeing in a solenoid valve. This one's a little stripped down for whatever reason. Uh, an interesting product for sure. But um, let's talk about how it works, okay? So in this one here, in this particular product, we don't have a, a regular diaphragm spring kind of situation like a regular solenoid valve. It has kind of a captured plunger here that operates as its diaphragm. So what happens is we're looking at our first illustration here, and this valve is closed, sitting in a closed position. Okay, so now the, we apply 24, 24 volt AC to the solenoid from our timer and the plunger goes up into the solenoid and allows water to enter into the device. It goes through and it comes out this end here. Okay, so when the water pushes up on this, it closes this piece here. This is a little drop down plunger here that creates the air gap. The anti-siphon part is the air gap that's here that prevents water from being sucked back through the valve. Once this opens, there's an air gap and all it can pull is air. So 
what happens is, is that the water moves through the device, pushes this little plunger up, sealing the air gap, and now water is moving through the valve. Okay, and when we remove the electricity from the solenoid, the, the plunger drops back down, and now we see water starting to drain out of the valve, which allows the air gap to open. The little plunger in here drops down, opening up an air gap, and now we are prepared to protect against back siphonage, because if there's a suction that happens over here on the main line, it's only going to pull air through the top here. That's why this has to be mounted above ground. It can't be mounted uh, ground level or below inside of a valve pit because if this happens and if the, the valve pit fills up with water and there's back siphonage occurs, then it'll pull up that contaminated water out of the valve pit back into your drinking water supply.